So on this particular episode, of, um, I'm, I have a friend of mine, Paul Falcone. Uh, Paul is my go-to guy with all issues related to uh, HR and the human factor side of things. We've done a whole bunch of other uh, things together in previous lifetimes. Paul is a, he's a renowned expert um, in effective hiring, performance management, leadership development, uh, especially in terms of organizations building higher performing leadership teams. Uh, currently, he's a chief human resources officer at the Motion Picture and Television Fund in Woodland Hills, California. I hear it's a heck of a lot warmer out there than where I am here in Connecticut. Not complaining, not judging. He's a best selling author, and he's done a lot of cool HR stuff for some well known uh, brands. Uh, and studios, Nickelodeon, Paramount, uh, the the, na- the late night lineup on NBC, including Tonight Show, Saturday Night Live. Okay, that being said, he's just a good friend. I just like talking to him. That's right. That's correct. So, Paul, um, I initially thought we might go down the HR path a little bit, but then I backed up and I thought, no, this is let's make this just a little bit more human and a little le- less resources. You know what? Mm-hmm. what in your mind, what are some of the human factors that are that are being overlooked right now or taken for granted uh, during this like completely irregular situation? There's stuff. The, the funny thing to me, Dave, is when you look at what we're doing right now, that we are at the point of what I call pure creation. This is, we've never done it before. We have no history, policy, practice, nothing. This is the equivalent of, of, of building the plane while you're flying it which is really, in certain ways, very cool. This is a a once-in-a-lifetime, once-in-a-hundred-year type of event. But so many of the things are getting magnified out there that you probably should have been doing well as a leader to begin with, Um, but now the need is even that much stronger. So when you talk about the communication, when you talk about the team building, when you talk about who you are relative to this concept of being a leader in corporate America, it's all like on steroids right now. It's all exposed. Right. And you have to understand that a lot of your employees are very frightened right now. Sure. It, it, it's, it's a tough time. They don't know sure. what they don't know. And so when you put that all together, everything is amped up. So with this sort of layer of paranoia, layers of fear, layers of uncertainty, what, what, what advice would you give to someone in a leadership role you know, to address some of these issues? The first thing I'd say is we all need to collectively – chill out a little bit. We need to calm down a little bit. So many managers have gotten nervous about this idea of managing their employees remotely. Okay. So if you just look at that bucket for just a minute, the the, the thought is this, look, we're adults. Give your people some room, let them do their thing. This is for some people, they're going to really rise to the occasion for other people. You're right. They're not going to have a good time at this because they're not great when they're under your supervision. Mm -hmm. So now you put them totally on their own and you're suspecting that they may not perform very, very well because there's no one watching over them. And to a degree, that's true. But I'm also going to tell you that you'd be surprised. Some of the ones who excelled in the workplace when they were under your nose, so to speak, may not do as well Mm -hmm. working remotely. And other people who kind of didn't like being under your thumb may really thrive. Give them some room. Calm the room. Mm -hmm. Calm it down. We all are a little... Everyone, from what I can see in the workplace, is just a little too nervous. They're a little too anxious. And I think we have to be that calming force. It's the first cut that I would say when you're looking at your own leadership style and your sure. leadership skills and, and being self, you know, introspective, I guess, is, is yeah. the word about who you are right now and who you choose to be. And the question that I ask everybody who, um, ha- you know, is courteous enough and kind enough to sit down and interview uh, with me here is, Paul, what lessons do you think we're learning right now or have we learned and, and, you know, that we really can't let go of? When this thing is over with and when everybody's in a big hurry to move on to the, you know, getting back to normal, what are lessons that we're taking away and we're learning right now that we just can't forget? Dave, so much is going to change because of this. And and literally, think about there is going to be a scattergram of activity once businesses start to come back. Uh, truthfully, anyone who's thinking about retiring after they've been through this, they're going to retire. So that's going to create a lot of openings. But you also have a lot of employees have been laid off or they've been furloughed or they've been given a 20% haircut. And I hate to say this, companies are doing what they need to survive. And I get that. But employees sometimes, if they were thinking about possibly moving on, there will be some residual resentment against a company that gave them a haircut or furloughed them or did whatever. So those people are going to be, so there's going to be a lot of openings that are being created. 
we have to expect a massive, massive shift. The second thing that I would say here, though, is you cannot over communicate in times like this. And the truth of the matter is we take it for granted. What you're realizing now when you're managing a remote team is you have to build more structure into that relationship. You have to have weekly meetings. You have to make sure you're spending one-on-one time with your people. The truth of the matter is we should should do that all along. That should have never have stopped, but it did Mm -hmm. because we all got so busy. And let's face it, there's no such thing as a true manager anymore. Everyone is a working hands-on manager. Mm -hmm. You're an individual contributor and you're a manager. That's what the paradigm is. And we get so caught up in our own work sometimes that we forget the leadership piece and how we're supposed to role model behaviors for people. The third thing I would say, which is critical is, are you paying it forward? Think about it. You're not going to get another opportunity like this in your lifetime. Now you may say, Hey, that's great. But people are really learning things about themselves. Um, My son uh, lives in Chicago. He graduated college a few years ago. He's taking all these LinkedIn learning classes. He's building all these certification programs. He was laid off about a month ago, Mm -hmm. but ultimately, you know, we're worried he's in his own, you know, he's got his own little apartment. Are you doing okay? He said, actually, I'm doing much better than I thought. I thought I'd hate being alone. Mm-hmm. I'm finding some comfort in being alone. This is giving people a chance, Dave, to test things that they've never had a chance to test before. Sure. And some of them are really rising to the occasion. There's a lot of good that's going to come out of this. It'll be very interesting to see where this goes. So bottom line is you seem to be an optimist. I'm very much an optimist about this. I think it's hard where we are right now, there's struggles with what do we do and what's the next step and what have other countries done and where are we relative to them? I get all that stuff. But um, the one thing about America, our brand has always been innovation. And look at the technology and how it's changing and look at the opportunities it's going to create for people to work remotely. Because believe it or not, we're proving for ourselves, this model does work. And we know how much the younger generation, the the, the Gen Zers are really coming out saying they want more independence. This may be the thing to facilitate that. Exactly. I didn't know what Zoom was a month ago. <laughs> now I am on Zoom all the time. Right. You're, it's you're, so, you're a Zoom pilot. You're the guy. I'm a Zoom, I, I'm a Zoom guy. That's right. And, and so the reality is there's so many. This is, that's one microscopic view of really the trend of what's going on. There's a lot of good stuff that's going to sure. come out. All right. I don't want to eat up too much of your time, especially on a Saturday. Thank you so much for all your help, Paul. And I look forward to talking to you again soon. Oh, my pleasure, Dave. I do too. Thank you.